Hello and welcome to this English language course. In this lesson, we discuss guided composition writing. I'm going to take you through guided composition, paying particular attention to guided letter writing. And this type of letter we are going to look at is a friendly letter. Now, a friendly letter is that letter that you write to a person of your age, a relative, or any of your associates. What aspects do you need to look at as you write this friendly letter? You need to look at the language that you, have, you use. Your language is supposed to be informal language where we expect you to use contracted forms like haven't, isn't it? There is not going to be much formality in the language. It is going to be informal language. Let's look at how we lay it out. We start with the address. There is no hard and fast rule on where you should place your address. But it is generally agreed that the address should be at the top left. And remember, as you write the address, you have to make sure that there are no punctuation marks or abbreviated forms on the address. For example, instead of writing in full, one would write RD for road. That should not be the case. ST for street. That should not be the case. Instead, you should write in full. After writing the address, you skip a line. Then you write the date. How do you write the date? You write it in full. After the date, you go on to the salutation. You can use such introductions as hi. And remember when you spell it, it's never H-I-E, but it's H-I or H-E-Y. You then write the name of the person to whom you are writing the letter. What follows is the body of the letter. Where we are going, you are going to be talking about the main aspects of your letter. The first paragraph, probably you are going to present your main idea, why you are writing that letter. Then the other paragraphs are going to talk of a number of things depending on the situation. Then lastly, you look at the ending where you say, yours truly, yours in a dilemma, yours giving your name. We are presented with ideas from the letter that we are going to read. Then what is then necessary here is the amplification of the ideas, the development of the ideas. How are you going to give advice to the person in the letter? I also expect you to use the necessary phrases that, we, we, that are needed when we are giving advice. Monica, in the, in the letter, she's a very intelligent lady, age 23, studying at a local university for a teaching degree, and she has a difficult situation that she needs your assistance. She has four different men who have approached her, all seeking a hand in marriage. Number one, Beba Broad, Mutari. 3 November 2016. Hi, buddy. You won't believe the situation I find myself in. I was asked for my hand in marriage, not by one, but by four men, all at the same time. Imagine, 
My friend, I am currently stuck and undecided. I don't know what action to take. Like I earlier briefed you that I'm stone broke and I can't afford my college fees this semester. So these proposals came at the right stroke of time. On the other side, I yearn to complete my studies and acquire my teaching degree. But on the other hand, I am stuck and can't support myself, especially now that my father was retrenched from his job and can't support me any further. The four men who asked me for marriage are all respectful and have been very kind to me, although I never imagined they would propose for marriage. John is stinking rich and a famous local businessman. He's not tight-fisted, but generous and has a high sense of humor. But alas, he's 15 years older than me. Craig, on the other hand, is a shy, handsome-looking young musician who is still working to make a name for himself. He's romantic and talks quite seductively to me. Troy is a pretty well-to-do young legal practitioner who generates a lot of money as a lawyer for a big company. He's generous, loving, and caring, but he's always busy and does a lot of traveling, both locally and internationally. Tindo is an accountant and has got a fabulous and well furnished flat in town and a sports car. He is an author of some popular romantic novels and is a gifted musician who can play many musical instruments. He is a charmingly handsome and generous man who is an envy of every woman. I have seen him so many times in the company of his mother. He is the only child she has and I guess he is everything for her. Now please, help me make an informed decision. What do you think I should do? I'm looking forward to hearing from you, your friend in dilemma, Monica. Our attention here is on the use of the words, polite words that you can use, the words that you can use to give advice. You must, you must do away with the tindo. This is what I would expect you to be giving out, the advice that you are, you are supposed to be giving out to Monica. So, what I would want you to do is to then write your own guided composition, giving your advice to Monica, based on the letter that we have read. Try and See if you can work out the characteristics of the characters in the play and give Monica the right choice. Let us have a rundown of what we have learned today. At first, we looked at the layout of the guided composition, where we said the address should be on the top left. After that, you leave a blank line, then go and write the date in full. Thereafter, you go into salutation, where you are going to write dear, then your name, the name of the person to whom you are writing to. Thereafter, you write the contents of your letter. At the end of the letter, you say yours. Truly, yours friend, because it's a friendly letter, it's allowed. Then, we went on to look at the most important aspect of the letter writing, which is to do with the amplification of ideas. It is very important that you develop ideas, you put flesh to the ideas that would be presented in a guided composition.